And then at one point she she said in the video, Mm -hmm. I don't know if people know this about me, but if I weren't who I am today, I would have been a combat journalist. Oh, oh. (laughs) So why would we know that about you? (laughs) Could you imagine Stephanie on Battlefield? (laughs) Stephanie is oh in God. the Ukraine, like, <laughs> <laughs> reporting <I don't> live. <laughs> Literally. Mana. Pixie. Jump scare. Hosted by Quinn Murphy. And Becca Hobart. <gasps> Hi. We're Queen. we're Queen, and and we're, we're Becca. Becca, and welcome to Manic Pixie Jump Scare, a podcast where Becca and I talk openly about our shared delusions, passions, and, and love, love for, for each, each other. other. <laughs> so, hi, Quinn. Hi, I'm being very mysterious today. I'm not sure if you yeah, noticed. You're hiding. I am hiding. Spooking me. Like I'm anything hiding. Could be happening, and I just yes. have no idea about it. Um, yeah, and this is of course visually. There's no way to hide with your voice unless you just don't speak, right? But, or have um, a modulator of some sort. Yes. Which, uh, oh my know. god, we should do a modulator episode. Yeah, How do we for do sure. that? Wait. Like scream three. <laughs> we have to work. Know. We have to work with the engineers <laughs> on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so something crazy that happened to me this week is I actually got a haircut. And and you were tweeting some things that made me had me um R O F L. Um yes. <laughs> specifically the Topher one. Oh my god. Which, I I love him. And it is kind of true. And I like <laughs> if there's someone I have to look like, I'm glad it's Topher because I find him very <laughs> You already know who I am. Um my name's Topher. <laughs> He's so scary. Oh my god! No, Daphne. I love how every video I see of him, he looks completely different. <laughs> oh, have you seen him do the Grinch thing? Yes, I love that one. So funny. He's obviously a fan of <laughs> of the, the film media we love. that we love. Um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, so yeah, uh, when I got this haircut, I like went in with a little bit of a different kind of um vision of what it would Mm -hmm. be and it did not look like how I have it styled I've now had my chance to do my own little zhuzhing of it and kind of have a little bit of time to figure out how I like to wear it but Mm -hmm. I was I was not obsessed with the results at first in fact it say it with me now ruined my day kind of oh god (laughs) (laughs) oh no um but now I'm a little bit more at peace with it in fact I like it um good and so I guess I will just reveal it to my friend Becca <laughs> in three, two, one. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I never would have expected this. Yeah, Wait, that's true. When <laughs> you look so like cute, I know, isn't it cute? <laughs> it's so cute. No, and I think cuteness is going to be a big theme of my 2023. More on that later. Um, but yeah. Wow. This I'm is, gonna I, like, you. my whole perspective of you has just changed. I know. Isn't it kind of drastic? Wow. I think that's what I was really struggling with the first day I had it, because I my hair has not been, like, this, like, short. It's It's different lengths, obviously, but, like, it hasn't been, like, this short, especially in the back, in, like, five years oh my god <laughs> um and so I think part of my disdain towards my haircut at first was just like the shock yeah um and yeah and I'm always like I, it was funny because I'm always one of those people who like when my ha- friends get haircuts I'm like oh my god and they like freak out I'm like oh my god what's the big deal like whoa, whoa, whoa. but then I was fully like having a meltdown the day I got my haircut and I'm like <laughs> oh my god I'm about to go people. get to the jump scare. Literally, I was about to. <laughs> I was about to call on my better angels. Um, but no, it looks so cute though. Yeah, I do understand that for people more with longer hairstyles. If you're like a person who wears your hair like really short to your head, sometimes they'd be like, "Oh my god, my hair looks weird," and it's just 
it's just there <laughs> yeah just doing what it so doing. but yeah no it's so cute though but yeah Yay. so this is what my hair looks like now um and yeah so that was a big event in my week and then of course we also had new year's eve Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I also noticed Becca just has a sign behind her that says always kiss me <laughs> oh my so, god <laughs> that's something that I'm a little concerned and scared about we also do need to acknowledge our in-studio audience today Mr. Parker <laughs> which yeah we have Parker right here uh-huh so hi he's obsessed with becca as far as i can tell <laughs> yes and then miss joy is behind him and then i have mm. katie over there on the ground oh my god there's a third one yeah that's crazy yeah and i'll get to what who whose dogs these are and where i am in a moment actually i have that question <laughs> but i'm so yeah. glad you're gonna address it um <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we also had New Year's this week, and for that, I went to my friend Mara, who listens to the podcast, Shout Out. Aww, I went to her house thanks, in Sea Isle City. Ooh. Um, and... I've been to Sea Isle City. Oh my god, yeah. Actually. It's cute. Nice boardwalk. Yes. Um, The drive to the Jersey Shore, though, however, one of the worst things a person can do, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. being a kid who grew up going to Delaware beaches, it's like you get on Route One and you just, you know, drive for two hours, you take a left turn and you're there. Yeah. Boom. But Jersey will have you going through East Jabip, uh, like Bumblefuck, everywhere, like every nomenclature we have for like the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And then like two hours later, you're suddenly at the beach, like a little traumatized by the journey you just took. Yeah. And people um, are trying to hit you with their car. Li- literally that's something people are always trying to do at the beach people are always trying to hit you with their car (laughs) it's crazy actually um yeah but yeah and it was actually kind of crazy because one of the people in attendance obviously all my girlies were in attendance but one Mm -hmm. of the people in attendance was somebody i went to high school with like actually graduated high school with whoa and i was at first scared but then yeah. it actually ended up being really nice. We took ASL together, like all four years of high school. So that's kind of how we Aww. knew each other. So we had a connection, but we have, it's one of those people you just haven't talked to since high school. And I was just like, yeah. oh my God, hey. I love that. And that actually ended up being really fun. So like that oh ended gosh. up being like one of my favorite parts of the night is getting to spend some time. So guys, that. um, and yeah, but I've been experiencing that a lot lately being home. It's like I see everybody I went to high school with whenever I leave my home. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's also like something so concerning about being home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that was New Year's. I wore a fun hat and my new hairstyle. So I was feeling, you know, I was also watching Too Hot to Handle. Becca, do you have any history with that show? No, I actually haven't watched it yet. Oh my god. Well, I hate like the concept of it. Um, right. And I disagree with the concept of it, which is basically like they bring all these hot people to uh, the villa, very Love Island coded. But then mm-hmm. they're like, actually, you can't have sex. We want you to form deeper connections. Yeah. Um, and if and you it's have like, sex, we'll like cut off your arm or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then they, there's a prize fund and they take money away depending on sexual acts you commit if you choose to break the rules. Yeah. Um, and it's just this whole like kind of new age like wellness retreat kind of vibe but like for like sexual healing in which there are no like actual like people involved or like people who are like I believe diagnosed with like sex addicts or something but the show kind of portrays them that way yeah anyway they're just like 20 uh, and everybody on the show is 22 yeah like get it's a like, group guys is not the time in your four. life yeah not the time in your life <laughs> you like need to be thinking about forming deeper connections necessarily yeah, yeah. um and yeah they're just there's just a lot of problems with the show, but boy, is it entertaining. <laughs> we were literally just like sitting there watching it together on New Year's Eve. We eventually like went out somewhere, but like before we went out, we were just, we watched like hours of it. Oh, wow. I am like, I do know some of the drama like from it. And mm-hmm. uh, weirdly enough, Tana Mojo's involvement with people <gasps> oh, on the show yeah. afterwards mm-hmm. seems interesting. So yeah. maybe I'll dive, I'll dive deeper into that. Yeah, no, I watched, I've definitely seen the first two seasons in full, and then I think I missed season three because I think we were watching season four, mm. Um, and there was this girl 
she was doing the most she did the most insane thing i've maybe ever seen a woman do on television (laughs) um what is it she went to so she was paired up with this guy and then they bring these new people into the villa and they each get to pick somebody they have a date with and Mm -hmm. so this new woman comes into the villa who is one of the hottest people i've ever seen to be quite fair Okay. And she picks the girl. I'm going to call her Melissa just for the sake. That's not her actual name. What is her name? Mm-hmm. Kayla. Kayla is her name. I'm going to call her Kayla, actually. Okay. So <laughs> Kayla's boyfriend gets taken on a date by this really hot woman. And she literally has herself in shambles for the whole time they're on the date. They come mm-hmm. back from the date to like introduce new girl to the villa. They're com- holding hands. Kayla is immediately like sobbing, crying. Oh God. Just because they're holding hands. And her boyfriend was good on the date because girl who came into the island had a free kiss and the guy like rejected it. He's like, there's somebody back there. I can't do it. Whoa. And so, yeah. And then what else happened? So then he explains that to Kayla and they're like, oh, you know, we're, you know, paired up like officially the next day, Kayla like has sex with him, which fines or doubled which means that loses them $40,000 of the $200,000 prize fund. Oh my God. And Kayla is in the confessional being like, we all have to know who Seb's girl is. Seb being her boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. It it was one of the, I, me and my friends just <laughs> set, kept saying, get up, get up. This woman was so down bad. Like she had to <laughs> get up, stand up. Girl. And like you would expect if that was your behavior that you would be with like the hottest guy someone's ever seen. But he was just a normie, I'm sure. But he was just like a guy. Yeah. Like maybe more attractive than usual, but like he was also Scottish, which like he doesn't look like he speaks with a Scottish accent. And when I first like actually heard his voice, I was so jarred. Like I was like, <laughs> this is so scary, actually. War. He did beat. <laughs> okay. Oh um, my gosh. But yeah, she has to handle as much as I want to hate it. And as much as they're really good at like, you'll watch for like 30 minutes and be like, nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. But then they'll like create intrigue and it'll go on for like five minutes and you'll be like, well, now I'm invested. Yeah. Interesting. So you brought in the new year watching it? No, we eventually like it was my last act of 2022, shall we say. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, But yeah. But what is going on with you this week? my Becca Lynn. Well, thanks for asking. So yeah, I'll start with explaining my surroundings. So basically Uh my aunt, Ryan's mother (gasps) and Ryan himself are actually, and their family are in Aruba right now. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause they'd be traveling. traveling. Oh, exactly. And, um, basically someone needs to watch the dogs and also my grandmother. And Quinn, I am so glad you are eating peanut butter toast right now. Uh-huh. It's true. It's true, guys. Put a pin in that, okay? okay. Put a pin in that. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, but so I slept over here last night. Um, and my grandma, I love her. She does need clarification on a lot of things. Like who I am, where she is, who she is. Something that can happen as you get older. (laughs) Exactly. So explaining that has been a little bit exhausting, but Mm. she's good company and the dogs are so cute. And um, yeah, I'm so glad I, I'm so grateful that they're going to pay me like $10 to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Do you solid. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so there's like a portrait of wolves up here. Got that dog in me. <laughs> it says, always kiss me. Love you to the moon and back. Classics. Uh, Just classics from classic. Marshalls and Home Goods. <laughs> I need to know about Ryan's relationship to Parker. We don't need to get into it now, but like. Yeah, so Parker is actually the biggest dog the world has ever known. He does look quite large, actually. He is huge. He mm-hmm. is, I think, 180 pounds. Oh, which is actually more than Ryan. Yeah, almost double. I imagine. Yeah, I imagine actually. <laughs> um, which is crazy, but 
So Parker was a rescue from the shelter and they got him just last year. So Ryan's been in college and doesn't know him too well. Oh. Um, out of the three, Joy is like Ryan's dog. Like when he's home, oh. she'll sleep with him. Um, but yeah, so Ryan and Parker are friends, of course, mm-hmm. but they're not they're not confidants in any in any means. I see colleagues yeah. even. Yep. Um, <laughs> Workers. Yeah. Um yeah. And then oh, also, okay. I have mm-hmm. to bring it up because breaking news of this week was like that freaking Idaho murder thing. Oh yeah. And the man was fanning the Pukino Mountains. <laughs> the Pukino <And>, News. <laughs> yeah, my my stepdad's best friend had him in school. Yeah, he went to. Is he a professor? Pleasant Valley. Oh uh, um, no, no, he's a teacher. Because he went to, or to I don't know this for sure. To sales, yeah, which is which is in Pennsylvania, twenty minutes from me, and has the same. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to go there for model UN conferences because. Really? Yeah, because my high school's patron saint was Saint Francis de Sales. Oh my god! Right. So okay, we had yeah. like a connection. You were so close to me then. To them, yeah. You know who also went there. Um, yeah. Gabby of Nikki and Gabby. I guess also Nikki went there. The YouTuber twins. Are you familiar? I feel like if I saw a pic, maybe it's one of those classic situations where yeah, you're gonna recognize Nikki the face. Nikki sure. and Gabby, Nikki Minaj and Gabby Hanna. <laughs> um, the two greats. <laughs> I actually do not know these people really from Adam. Okay. From Adam Fair or enough. Eve, since it is two people. Yeah. Thank you. That's fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they were YouTubers and they actually live. I met Gabby at the mall one time. Okay, I work. Um, and yeah, they were like really popular at one point. Gabby has this thing. She makes this show called Blood Queens, which is just exactly Scream Queens. And that's why. And she had, she used to be friends with Trisha Paytas. Oh. Um, so Trisha Such Paytas. Such a classic time, narrative. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Used to be Trisha friends Paytas. with Trisha Paytas. <laughs> <laughs> on everyone's resume. Mm. But um, so Trisha flew out to be on the show mm-hmm. and stayed at Hotel Bethlehem, which is just like 15 minutes away from me. And she did make a Weedle. vlog in Hotel Bethlehem and was like, yeah, this place is haunted. And I did see a ghost last night. And that's why people I work with saw her at their Ulta when they used to be at the other Ulta. They said she Trisha just, or Gabby? Trisha. They <gasps> said Trisha got dropped off by an Uber and stayed in the store for like three hours. And they couldn't believe what they were seeing. I would be so gagged. I'm, obsessed, I'm obsessed, obsessed with the Allentown Lehigh Valley lore. <laughs> no, literally. Right, going on right now. <laughs> it's oh, lot. my it's goodness. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's very fun. Wow, wow, wow. Um... Yeah, I'm so excited about that, actually. And also, we Thank do you. need to note that I was eating peanut butter toast, peanut mm-hmm. butter toasted English muffin, even. Yeah. Um, Because it is the morning. Becca and I are shooting this episode in the morning time. It's 8.30 a.m. <laughs> and it's morning for both of us, because there were some times when I was in Europe where I would wake up at 4 a.m. and Becca would I be wouldn't up even at, call like... that morning. I would say middle of the night. Yeah, <laughs> I would wake up in the middle of the night. And Becca would also be in the middle of the night, famously. But, like, yeah, just the other earlier end. in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and so, but yeah, we're we're, we're morning. And we're morning. <laughs> we're morning. We're, we're we're morning and we're morning. Um. Yeah. And so, yeah. always. But uh, Becca, is anything else going on? Anything else happened to you? Oh man. I mean, my New Year's Eve was kind of uneventful. Mm, oh, yeah. me and my mom had a um. We finally had like a girls' day where we went and we went shopping mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. around and all over. And it was so nice to get things again because for Christmas, I just get money. So mm. to be able to spend that money is actually the best gift of all. I got these new beats for okay, on the go. work. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, Becca's not wearing any like ear things today. And I'm like, how is she <laughs> even doing this? Bra. No, yeah. babe check it out and they're purple 
That's all I could ever want from anything I own. Speaking <laughs> of, the spirit of Becca Hobart was in me when I bought this. Oh my god. I, I bought a new water, water bottle. The bottle. color is not showing up pretty well, but it's like Becca Hobart lavender. Periwinkle, so cute. Yes. And I was like, because like when I bought my last water bottle, I specifically bought it so it would be like neutral because it's just a white water bottle. But then I was like, mm-hmm. but I'm very much out of that era because like, I don't know. I never wanted a water bottle to like clash with my outfit, you know? Yeah. Like that's how, that's my sickness a little bit is sometimes I buy things and I'm like, does this work with literally anything I would wear? Right. Um, But it's like, Quinn, why do you have to match a water bottle to your outfit? That's not really like a thing that like, mentally sane people do i mean i think about that too so and this Don't is why care. we have a podcast actually <laughs> mentally, um, just mentally another insane reason people. <laughs> um uh, and we're just allowed to talk to each other for some exactly. reason they let us um <laughs> but anything else to report before we get to i think that's it for now i'm gonna see yes. stuff for my weekly segment so yeah, and we also are moving a little quickly because Becca famously has a job, something I can't relate to, and a lifestyle <laughs> I don't understand, but, like, can maybe see myself supporting one day. Yeah, um, you respect it. Yeah, yeah I respect Becca's, thank I respect you. Becca and I's differences as much, <laughs> if not more than I respect our similarities. Um, uh, amazing. But we're going to throw into a little break, <laughs> and we will be back in just a second to get into our topic for today. <laughs> did anybody uh, uh, one of my favorite parts of the gift of the jump scare just to take it back um for a second <laughs> is yeah. that one scream that went like <laughs> and like that goes <laughs> your sound editing was so good for that I know. I really, I really tried. I know. Yeah. And I spent way really too good. long on that twelve minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know twelve minutes. Yeah. Really. Um. But anyway, so we're here today, and as we all know, we just started a new year. We talked about it a little bit up top, and so something I've seen, and that Becca has also seen, mm-hmm. that is really fun on the internet, is people will put out their predictions for the new year. Yeah. I actually remember. I used to listen to Tyler Oakley's podcast, oh, Psycho really? Babble. I believe it's nice. still a thing. I don't listen anymore. Yeah. Um, but they used to start every year with an episode like this where they would make like kind of unhinged like predictions. Like they would just mm-hmm. be kind of like silly. Yeah. I know my list kind of strikes a balance. Like yeah. I feel like my list is like. It's not like completely ridiculous, but some of it is like a little bit fanciful. But you know, yeah, we can only hope. Um, I think mine are just all true. I, I would expect <laughs> that out of you, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Becca, without damn further ado, do you want to get into your first prediction? We each have seven. Well, sure. I don't have any backups, right? What if we? predict the same thing i guess it just exists okay yeah all right i'll be surprised if we predict the (laughs) the exact same thing with some of the circumstances i've laid out personally (laughs) okay okay all right um so my first prediction which i think it could have honestly already happened and i'm just not sure also Uh this is joy guys joy is so huge she's so cute she's miss chunk she's chunky girl (laughs) Um, all right, so my first prediction is we are going to receive a full length Kim Kardashian documentary. Uh, like produced by a third party. There's mm. no host, it's just her. Uh-huh. Um, probably something about like mom life. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be on Hulu. Okay. Work. Me and yeah. my friends were talking about how the Kardashians like kind of like, I didn't understand that when Keeping Up with the Kardashians ended, it was because they just had another deal with Hulu that was probably better than the one they were getting on E. Well, yeah. And then they just literally did the same show on Hulu. On Hulu, yeah. And it is good. I, I trust you on that. <laughs> Some of it. I, when they I, cut I, that clip they caught of Kendall trying to cut the cucumber, priceless, actually. <laughs> the whole show was worth that clip. 
my favorite thing right now that a Kardashian Jenner has contributed to like the oeuvre is Caitlyn Jenner saying 9-11 in that one video. <laughs> Another great one. <laughs> and we got that for free as well. <laughs> yes. On Twitter.com. Um uh, but yeah, I also did see a um interview with Kim Kardashian has a interesting because I do think the Kardashians are like ultimately like an evil force yeah um what's like the um they're like a lawful evil kind of force in the universe that's like what i feel their alignment is yeah um that and uh but i did see an interview recently with kim where she was talking about like the kanye stuff and how like her kids don't she's like managed so her kids don't really know about like what's going on with him in the public eye Mm -hmm. which like first of all incredible feat yeah literally Um, and second of all, it was it was interesting because it was like she's like, oh, I had the best dad, and I like want to provide that experience for my children. And I'm like, oh my God, not you being like a human being. Wait, yeah, kind of crazy. Um. Also, those new pictures of Chloe. Did you see them? Which ones? The cover she did, where people were saying she looks like Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. I think what's happening with them removing mm. all their implants is so sinister. Like, I cannot it's even crazy. describe it. I cannot no, even describe how sinister and evil I believe it to be. It's really um, scary. Did you watch the Mina Lay video about, like, skinniness being back in no, or whatever? Yeah. I should, though. Spooky, though. Yeah. Um. But I am obsessed. Uh, Kim, as we talked about Topher on TikTok... Yeah. Looking different every time I see him. Khloe mm-hmm. Kardashian actually kind of originated that phenomenon. <laughs> she is a true shapeshifter. <laughs> every time you see Khloe <laughs> Kardashian, completely different. different You're bitch. like, wait, literally. that's Khloe Kardashian? <laughs> no, literally. Like, if that a child had to do a memory game, the, the Photoshop one that, like, yes. created yes. laws. <laughs> uh-huh. That was the first thing of, like, remember when God. people were doing all those AI portraits, like, the three weeks ago? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was the first version of that, which yeah, is another evolution of yassification ultimately, but yeah. Wow. At the end of the day, all we do is yassify. Yes. Well, yeah. great first, my first prediction, Becca. Thank you. I'm so eager to hear yours and what is going on. Well, mine is also in the way you admire the Kardashians. I, well, I don't quite, do you admire them, would you say? No, but I observe them. Okay. Well, someone I admire and observe is Lady Gaga, of course. And my yeah. first prediction has to do with her. Okay. I believe this year Lady Gaga will reveal something about her investigation into January 6th. <laughs> <laughs> I looked for my own evidence. <laughs> oh my God. I read that whole article last night. I don't know why that wasn't like the biggest thing of the year. <laughs> it was like Magritte surreal. So funny. Like hearing her talk about it because... Guys, there's this article where, like, it's been memefied, but there's this headline. And, like, the byline was Lady Gaga looked for evidence of January 6th. <laughs> um, oh, my God. And she's it was the smartest because, woman. It was because she sang the national anthem at Joe Biden's inauguration, which famously happened very soon after the January 6th. I see. Um, and they were bringing her around the Capitol. And she was talking. She's really talking to Bernice King, a okay. descendant of Martin Luther King. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, um, I just had heard all this stuff and I wanted to like see it for myself. And at one point I was offered to see the Capitol and I said no, because I was so afraid of what was going on in there. But then I said, no, I have to go. And I saw a window and she said a broken window to her represented white rage. (laughs) She's a genius. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then at one point she tr- she said in the video, mm-hmm. I don't know if people know this about me, but if I weren't who I am today, I would have been a combat journalist. Oh, oh. <laughs> so could why you, would we know that about you? <laughs> could you imagine Stephanie on Battlefield? <laughs> Stephanie is oh in God. the Ukraine like... <laughs> reporting live <laughs> literally she's so small oh my she could get hurt <laughs> that's so funny I'm though so obsessed with her like loves her i do want to just live in my own world like she does one day 
<laughs> I want to be as disconnected. Because I, I never, like, I truly believe she believed she would be a combat journalist. Like, in that moment, I truly believe she believed that she would be a combat journalist if she wasn't Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if that was actually something she thought about before she said it a or in that percent. moment. <laughs> but I believe in that moment, she believes. <laughs> she knew. And that's what I love about her. Everything is like, she, she brings commits. in authenticity to the inauthic- inauthenticity. She commits, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh but yeah, God, I believe so she funny. will tell us something about January 6th this year. A tell all. Um, a tell all. Even though I'm tired of people, t- I'm kind of over it. Like, okay, people broke into the Capitol like two years ago. Who cares? Yeah. I feel like if we were going to do anything about it, we should have been a little bit more in the moment. But anyway. Yeah. So I'm um, like a year ago, but yeah. Anyway. Okay, Becca. Right. <clears throat> we're coming with a lot so far. So what is your second prediction for this year? All right. So my second prediction, this is something that honestly, I don't keep up with these people, but I just feel it coming. Uh-huh. And that is... I believe Megan and Harry are going to start either a weed farm or an alcohol brand. One of the two. That's very, it's a very safe prediction. Yeah. At at the very least, like they're going to come out with a wine or something. Someone I'm also tired of hearing about. (laughs) Megan and Harry. Yeah. The royal family, Megan and Harry. I just don't care anymore. I don't care about any of them. Princess actually. Diana, all of them. Mm. <laughs> like, we love you, Princess Diana. I will but speak like... ill. I will speak ill. Dead. No, it's not even her, because she's not, like, unlike everybody else in the situation, she's not, like, you know, she's dead, so she can't, yeah. spoiler alert, um, for the crown. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> imagine someone's watching the crown. <laughs> spoiler alert and they the crown. Don't, like, <laughs> they don't like, know. They that don't know it's, dead. like, Oh God! About uh, real? Yes. <laughs> oh, I like to so think funny. that's happening somewhere. I hope. Um, also, the Crown. I don't. I don't like how offended British people get every time there's a new season of the Crown. Um, I yeah. I don't listen to British people. I'm never gonna watch the show. So and I'm like, and I'm like, they're bad people. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so many people, so many celebrities have. I think that the weed farm would be particular. I think the weed farm would be the more fun of the two. Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, there was all this that tweet about Megan and Harry. It was something about how they're inherently like boring, or like how they're annoying. Well, to me, they're, like sometimes like... bad things happen to annoying people, and we can feel bad <laughs> for them and still acknowledge they're annoying. They're annoying. Yeah, no, I don't really. Yeah, I'm not drawn to them, and mm-hmm. I think like. I don't know if I was like trying to escape this like huge spotlight, which had tortured me for so long. Like I wouldn't make a documentary series and I wouldn't like have a two part interview with Oprah. You know, mm. I would maybe lay low. Obviously speak maybe on they need the... money. Well, probably. <laughs> but then like get a job, um, but they don't have any <laughs> skill. Well, Meghan Markle has skills. I don't they, I don't know if Harry has like skills. He was also... in war. For a while. Oh, yeah. So he could do that. But um, have you seen his cover for his book? No. It's called Spare, which is a good title for a book. Um, okay. Written by somebody who was, you know, the spare. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like way too close on the cover. I'm like, sir, back up. Like, <laughs> oh. Wait, let me Google that. Something I love is saying back oh. up to a photo. <laughs> Yeah, God. Like, why he's so close? I need to edit the word square onto that. Square. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, make all of his features square. <laughs> oh, dang. Well, great well, prediction. Thank you. I, I feel it coming. Quinn, what is your second prediction of the day? My second prediction is that a bubbling under pop girl will cross over into household name status. <gasps> and I have three names. And I believe they're going to be in descending order of likelihood. So Caroline okay. Polachek is up first. Yeah. Yeah. She has a new album coming out. Um, and, you know, obviously an opportunity for her to maybe, you know, turn into something a little bit greater than she is right now. Mm-hmm. In terms of like, 
public perception. Absolutely. Uh, Rina Sawayama is oh, yeah. the next name I have. I believe that, like, if Sawayama were, like, like, the album Sawayama, like, something could happen with that album. It gets, like, reissued or something, and, like, she ends up getting, like, super famous or something. Yeah. Because that is an album that, like, you should, like, live in, like, indescribable fame after releasing something like that. Um, I know, seriously. I believe. Yeah. Um, I believe as And well. then number three is Ava Max. And um, oh, she's sweet, but a psycho. So left, but she's right, though. I like Ava Max. I do also. I feel like it, she would get very annoying if she were like main pop girl status, like truly. Fair enough. Um, but uh, she also does kind of need to do something because otherwise she's going to become like the second coming of BB Rexa. Yeah. Ooh, Queen, BB Rexa probably... was a name I debated putting on that list, but I'm like, it's ultimately too late for her. And that's it's something too I late. believe. Yeah. Yeah. We've done too much at this point. Um, They are very, I used to confuse them all the time. Also, Ava Max and BB Rexa. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. I'll take one of those little blonde bitches. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so but yeah, if anything, like Ava Max, I don't know. I like uh, some of her music better than I like B Rexes. Oh yeah. Oh, Naked by Ava Max. I recently tweeted. Um, will be the running up that hill of 2050, I believe. Like yeah, yeah. It'll be. You know, the only thing it we'll doesn't have that running up that hill does is that it was a hit at one point, and so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But naked should have gone number one in every country. So, great point. From I'm you. not backing down from that stance. <laughs> um, but I believe, like, ultimately, one of the most important things you can do if you're an obscure pop artist is just embrace that. Yeah, that's the secret to Carly Rae Jepsen's success. I feel like. She's not really trying to be like. That's the difference between somebody like Carly Rae and somebody like like bb rexa you can tell bb rexa is still trying with everything in her to be like main pop girl status yeah i totally get that i feel like like caroline polachek is like very much uses her obscurity oh yeah caroline polachek would fully be like by mistake like yeah she's not intending but she just might it happened yeah she just might um but yeah becca loves it Third prediction. All right. So this is the one where I'm like, I'm not sure if I read this summer as well or if I thought uh-huh. of it, but I, I, I'll i admit that. Um, I think Grimes will have a lesbian era. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. I think I that think... was, I think because somebody wrote Grimes and Pete Davidson will date. I think you're thinking, which like, okay. how different is that ultimately from a lesbian era? <laughs> Oh yeah, no. It that would be a smooth transition, I believe. That's like a straight woman's version of like, well, a straight woman's version of a lesbian era. It's just a lesbian era, but um, right. Dating Pete Davidson. There's an analogy there and a joke there, but anyway, <laughs> put a pin in it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think Hasanabi will stream about it for like five hours. As someone yeah. who has met Grimes, um, he's met Grimes. Of course, he has. Yeah, Grimes was on his stream before. Like in his house with him. Oh, I do remember this actually. Yeah. That I I like that was crazy to watch. I like dissociated that anyway. Um, but yeah, so I think that's gonna be good for her. Every time I hear Grimes speak, I'm like surprised. Yeah. She's weird. Yeah, I'm actually not familiar with her music though. I like some of her music. The only one I know is the only song I know that like she's involved with is Pink by Janelle Monet. That song's great. And even then I can't really tell where she comes in. Like it's one of those songs where like you can't really tell the difference between the voices. Yeah. <laughs> you should listen to the song Oblivion by Grimes. Work. So good. Pink like the inside of your baby. Um that song was in I May Destroy You. One of the best shows really? ever. One of the best shows ever yeah. made. Yeah. I should rewatch. Wait. So good. So <laughs> good. <laughs> Write that Sam. Write that Sam. All right. Well, Quinn, what's your third prediction? 
This one is where we start to get into some of the heavy hitters. Um, actually, I would say Lady Gaga discovering something about January 6th is a heavy hitter. But <laughs> Timothy Chalamet will announce a hiatus from acting. <gasps> uh, totally. What's it going to do? Oh, but God. like, we won't. The thing about this hiatus is that we won't really realize it because he has like so many movies like coming out constantly that we're like, wait, you took a hiatus? Like, cause like, <laughs> like he'll say he took a hiatus, but then like every two months there'll be a Timothy Chalamet movie coming out. There will be like, dates. Yeah. so what it, so what's going on with that actually? <laughs> um, he will come back using either he, they, or full they, them pronouns, but will remain <laughs> unlabeled. <gasps> oh my God. Mm-hmm. This is gonna change their career so much. It's <laughs> <Really? laughs> gonna change. It's gonna change everything, actually. Wow. Um, yeah, so funny. that little Countess Luann thing from <laughs> uh, Venice Film Festival. Uh, we're we're on to your tea, Timothy. Um, Timothy, <laughs> Tiffany Chalamet, Tiffany Tiffany Hot We Tiffany know Hot we know what's going on with you. We got, I've got your a ass. feeling. I've got a feeling about you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And so yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Um, perfect. Becca. Perfect. Perfect. Another prediction from you, perchance. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So this one, obviously, I had to bring her up. I think that. Ariana Grande uh-huh. will remain in her no new friends sort of okay. um era of life. Yeah. And so I think that it will really like all of the Arianators will be in hermit mode. Mm. Like I think people are realizing like it's okay to like go do something. And work on it and not really do it other things <laughs> yeah yeah Maybe people are realizing it's okay to go do something <laughs> love that quote love you that quote t- yeah <laughs> you, you can go do something because ariana grande is also doing something yes um can i say yeah i did want to predict a pregnancy i didn't end up doing it okay um and ariana grande was one of the names that came up it definitely could be but she's not gonna but then I thought the Wicked movie, she can't get pregnant yeah, middle no. of production. No, no, no. She's going to have to wait till after Wicked. But she is living kind of fast with that man. And not yeah. in like the dangerous like drug way, but in like the domestication way. Yeah. No, literally. They're married and everything. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, love her though. Anyway. <laughs> so, Quinn, what's your next prediction? Okay, and this one's this one's also this one was the one that I kind of came up with last, even though it's fourth. Um, mm-hmm. but um, uh, yeah, I'm excited about the potential of this happening. I believe Bo and Yang and Jack Harlow will be spotted holding hands. Oh my God, <laughs> Lil Nas X is gonna. Be- be so pissed Little, bro oh my i didn't even think of the Lil Nas x angle oh my god Lil Nas x will not let anyone breathe when that happens he's gonna tweet so much about that that is so funny i hope that happens i, know. I hope that happens so I think, much yeah i think it would i think it would shock the nation yeah for sure um because jack harlow is somebody who is publicly sus um <laughs> Like and I'm Bon Yang is someone who's him. publicly gay, so <laughs> those two uh, mixed. That's a lethal combination, really. At the end yeah. of the day, it's what ha- the show Heartstopper is all about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've learned so much from those teens, those British why teens. So, why are you so right about that? Wait, <laughs> that is the publicly conceit of the show. Publicly, hey. publicly <laughs> sus and publicly gay. Wait, seen holding hands. Seen holding hands. That's kind of a classic narrative, actually. Yeah, publicly oh. sus and publicly gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Quinn! <laughs> oh wow. Well, wow. only only MPJ could be coming at you with this stuff. <laughs> um, who else is thinking these things? Who else? Who else is <laughs> at at eleven head. p.m. last night? <laughs> um, and at eight a.m. this morning, I'm ready to say it. <laughs> so you guys, it doesn't matter when pre-production gets done, as long as it gets done. <laughs> um, 
Mabeko, what is your next prediction? We're already at number five. I know. We're this is going great. Hooking through it. Boom. We just are in agreement. So mm. my fifth one is that I think the comedian Matt Reif, who's like blowing okay. up right now for being hot, yeah. is gonna date a celebrity and like fully be the new Pete Davidson. And oh. he will just like go on like a reign of terror dating people. Oh yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of his Instagram clips and he's one of those people where like I do believe we were never supposed to be exposed to all these like beautiful people on the internet yeah no it's scary because it, it's truly shocking human biodiversity can be something that is so <laughs> shocking I know isn't it crazy we all look so different and we're just a mismatch like we all look kind of the eyes, same nose, but like, and mouth. yeah we yeah. all look kind of the same but also so different at the same time yeah it's crazy and but like some of us are just put together in a way where we're so much beautiful than the other ones I know we're so lucky to be some of those beautiful people I know yeah <laughs> us and Matt Rife uh, <laughs> top three yeah but like and he is funny I usually like I yeah, I saw funny. a stand-up set of him. Apparently, he was not, like, he's a little bit of an ugly duckling syndrome where he didn't, he, like, said he went through puberty late. Um, mm. So, so now he's, he's in funny. his, now he's in his swan era. No, and I think that's actually, so, so he's, like, a lethal person, actually, in mm-hmm. reality, because that's a dangerous yeah. combination. If you're high and you have a personality. Whoa. Because usually people could only really have one of those things because usually if you're hot, you're hot from like a young age. Yeah. Um, In like a non-creepy way, of course. <laughs> um, But like you understand that because of your looks, you will get things. And so you start yeah. to rely on that as you should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Whereas if you're, too. yeah, if you're born, you know, not a hot. Little ugly. A little ugly. <laughs> You have to develop like a little personality to like get you things if you want things. Yeah, I think that's why I'm funny. Oh, a thousand percent, me too. And then I, yeah, I grew into my hotness, and it, it it's a blessing. Yeah, exactly. Now um, we both have it all. <laughs> yes, and that's why we have, including our podcast. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. All right. Well, Quinn, what's your next prediction? This one's going to shock the nation a little bit um, because Barack Hussein Obama, our 45th president, is going to resume smoking publicly. Whoa. Um, Cigarettes, that is. Uh, Cool. Like, there are going to be several paparazzi photos of him, like, just chain smoking. Perfect. Um, And this is going to cause a cigarette renaissance. Now, like, like, it's going to become cool to smoke again. Yeah, in my mind, already cool. But (laughs) yes, like for uh, for those of us that are hip, yeah. But like, but like, MSNBC co-hosts will be like smoking cigarettes on air, taking it back to like Walter Cronkite's day. Like, gotcha. It's gonna be crazy, actually. And it was like I thought I was like, I thought like Barack Obama smoking was like a funny like novel concept, like a cigarette. But it turns out Mm -hmm. he did like smoke in the while he was president, like a lot. Oh yeah, I believe that on like the he... tennis courts and stuff. No, because he um he did it to like deal with the stress. Ooh, if I was the president, I would probably start a weed farm. Yeah, he seemed like he smoked like half a pack a day. It sounded like Ooh. at some points. Um, Ooh. Michelle was getting yeah. pissed. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Also, I just saw pictures of I believe it was Sasha Obama like. There are a bunch of pictures of her smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Someone tweeted <laughs> it and nice. was like, she's our princess Diana. <laughs> uh, oh love God. her. Um, but with Obama smoking cigarettes, like cigarette smoking will become something that's like culture warified. And so like conservatives mm. will like stop smoking cigarettes. Like, oh, altogether. my God. Wow. Oh, does that mean they're going to live longer, bro? <laughs> like that, we might. <laughs> and, you know, not all predictions are good. <laughs> some of them they do have negative or you know system. every rose has a thorn i will say because more people smoking cigarettes i believe is a good thing ultimately <laughs> um but you know the tobacco industry will create so many jobs 
that we and need the, and, is and we need uh, something i've said for years actually is that we need to surrender more of our country to big tobacco <laughs> um and you can quote me on that one actually y'all can um, take the whole midwestern half <laughs> midwestern half yeah um <laughs> and that is the fifth prediction from quinn murphy and becca hobart Perfect. what is the sixth prediction of yours this is the one that i'm so excited that is being brought up right now uh-huh. and so i think we will see this in pop culture all year that yes. avocado toast probably from avocado shortages is just totally done <gasps> and what is so in is peanut butter toast and at a restaurant like if you're going to brunch with your friends you get peanut butter toast with banana boom pow because it's the best thing that's ever lived. Yeah, 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 yeah. My English muffin is slipping and sliding. <laughs> but there she is in but, her glory. And peanut butter toast is something that has always been in for me, at least. Oh, a thousand percent. It's I've what I like to call every a morning. Permanent. Yes. Every morning for the past probably like 10 years. I love it. Amazing I way to start it. your day, actually. Amazing yeah, way. It's the best. Oh, my God. That would be so funny if people were just like something as like mundane as peanut butter was like so like elevated to like every celebrity was like ooh <laughs> culture status yeah i think there are artisan happen, restaurants <laughs> creating i was um i did see something i forget what it was on but they made like artisan uncrustables basically <gasps> slay like they made like even like the little shell like they made was the it shell a good thing mythical morning it. Because they always do that, where they, like, recreate stuff. No, it was, like, an actual, like, business. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> But, yeah. Oh, my God, nothing like an Uncrustable, actually. So good. Especially when it's frozen. Like, what is going on with that? What did they put in that? <laughs> no, someone needs to study that. It's the Red <laughs> 40, probably. <laughs> or whatever. And thank God for her. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, so Quinn, what's your next prediction then? Well, everybody loves a little true crime. Mm-hmm. And so there will be some crimes committed this year. Oh, good. Actually, I'll say that allegedly, like allegedly there will be crimes committed this year because Fair enough. I believe that Ray Dunn and Colleen mm-hmm. Hoover yeah. will collaborate on a homeware line and a yeah. writer's workbook, sort of like a cross promotional type thing for both of their respective dear god yes but it will be so successful that the irs will have to investigate both of them actually this is breaking (laughs) this is breaking literally yeah oh my god so if you don't know i feel like everybody's like the fonts of this are just haunting me right now no yes yeah so ray dunn is like the homeware um mogul who i actually i have to be completely honest i did not look up if that was a real person ray dunn yeah it's a lady ray dunn person okay here she is (laughs) i'm looking at her yeah oh yes oh yes Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 So her and Colleen Hoover are going to be implicated in something together. Um, <laughs> Financial crime, just like Shakira. Yes. Um, and they'll go to Barcelona in jail and I'll have and to bail them out again. We will see white women mobilize in a way we've never seen before. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so scared. Because they're You too... will not be able to go to a Marshalls like this whole time. This oh, my God. Yeah. Wait. It's gonna Could be you flying met? off the shelf, guys. Wait, no. <laughs> TJ Maxx, Marshalls. Done for. Well, this January 6th esque <laughs> events at all of those places. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna fucking rob the cash register. Literally guys, every, to make every bail. <laughs> to make Something about bail. a Marshalls is though, like, if there was a revolution in a Marshalls, I couldn't help but understand. Because for whatever reason, when I do find myself in that store and in the more mm-hmm. like unlikely scenario that I'm actually buying something from there, the line is always like a mile long. Yeah. There are There's always like so many, many people, people trying to there. check out. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of the business model because them more than anybody else has all that shit like right at the line for you yeah. to like get. I get exactly. Mm-hmm. I also have to say, my mom exclusively buys her skincare from, like, Marshalls. 
Ooh. Where like people like open things and like Yeah. And also it's never the same. So how it's... does she stay consistent? <laughs> it's something that scares me about her, honestly. Um <laughs> it's a little spooky. Among many other things. But oh my gosh, Becca, we're already at our final predictions each. Uh. <laughs> and so, Becca, I'm sure you have something scintillating <laughs> as your final. So what's going on? This is my favorite one. So uh-huh. I think the final prediction of 2023 is that Quinn and Becca <gasps> are going to blow up and act like they don't know nobody. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> that is my main goal after all. Exactly. I feel like it's our year. It's our year. <laughs> it's our year. Let's do it. 2023, <laughs> year of MPJ. <laughs> um... And that's so funny you said that because my prediction actually has to do with us as well. <gasps> Get into um, it. My belief <laughs> is that Chef Rachel Hargrove of Below Deck fame yeah. will open a restaurant and invite us. Oh my God. I'm so excited to go. I hope she makes us peanut butter toast. <laughs> Literally. Oh my God. No, I want to try so her food. Good, I'm I want to sure. try her food so bad. No, literally. I do want to like, try her food. The way she does things. Crisa. No, it seems like everybody always is like going gaga over her damn food. Stuff. Yeah, no, I'm finally caught up on Below Deck and... Thank mm. God. Yeah, I know. There was no new episode last week. When I tell you, I almost K-worded myself. Like, not even like... <laughs> Kicking and screaming on the ground. <laughs> I almost kicked myself. Um... <laughs> But I was so excited all day. I was like, I was like, oh, new below deck tonight, new below deck tonight, new below deck tonight. Because Ooh. now all the seasons of below deck that are like I've seen, I can see, I can, I've seen. Well, not mm-hmm. all of them, but I'm the adventure one isn't really speaking to me to be honest. Um, me neither. I watched like 15 minutes of it one time, and I was like, okay, this is flop central already. Okay. Um, I believe it. And then, um. Oh, Sailing Yacht. I forgot about that uh, one. I haven't I seen like anything. I thought about watching Sailing Yacht, but I don't know. I haven't seen anything of it. I hear the Chief Stew is giving icon vibes. Okay, fair enough. People seem to really like the Chief Stew. Um, but anyway. I know one of their boats crashed before. That was a good <sighs> thing. That's so fun. Well, yeah. probably not for the people on the boat. Um, yes. But below deck, I am... Um, but I am so enjoying watching Captain Sandy. She's I probably my her. favorite thing about the season. I know. No, I love because... her so much. Wait, okay, so where are you falling on the whole, like, Alyssa Camille of it all? So I think, okay, this is what I've kind of figured out. First of all, Haley, you're so right. Icon. Icon. icon why is it like uh, she should icon, have at least icon. half the episode dedicated to her every episode no literally she's so smart she's so smart i love people like i feel like sometimes you do need somebody on below deck who just shows up and does the job yeah and that's also what she's trying to preach she's like just do the job yeah just literally do what fraser says and but she, um it's easy yeah <laughs> so i think Alyssa's really annoying i hate her personality uh-huh. she's like she's like pretty good worker uh-huh. Camille, I like her personality more so, but I think she's a terrible worker, and uh-huh. I can't respect people who have like no work ethic. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. both annoy me, basically. I I a thousand percent agree. Like I don't um, think either of them is right. Yeah, I don't. Um, I do think Camille will be fired. Probably. Maybe even in the next episode. Could be because Captain Sandy was like, "Okay, if you don't like shape up," and then she immediately yells at somebody who's like above her on the yacht. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. I-, I was like, I was like, oh, so is she just gonna get fired like immediately? Because like <laughs> she didn't even try, bro. Like she didn't even yeah. try. Like... <laughs> I no, think um... her and Ben are so cute, though. Camille and Ben. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, her and Ben are cute. Oh my god, that like shot of them like fucking though, that was crazy. That was crazy, actually. Which one? When they were in like oh, after that... they went oh, out. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. No, sometimes like 
He looks like they he was like cover hurting those her. Cameras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, but yeah, I don't like. I need one of them to leave the boat almost at this point because I can't have the central conflict of the season being that like they're butting heads because, as you said, I don't really like either of them. Yeah. And so, like, there's nowhere for me to come down on the conflict because I do believe that Camille is, like, not good at, like, her job. Yeah. Which also frustrates me as a viewer. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I also believe that Alyssa has just, like, made a decision about Camille and is, like, actively, like, rude and kind of, like, dismissive towards Camille. Oh, yeah. And is, like, trying to pull rank in this weird way. Like, so strange. Um... And yeah, I also think a bad sign about Alyssa is I've never seen like on the show a sec a, a chief stew be closer to a third stew than a second stew. Yeah. And it seems like yeah. Fraser and Haley are really close. Yes, they get along way better. And that could just be because they're both British. Um, like that, I, I imagine that helps. And they're probably from similar areas because they're they both sound like they both have like London y kind of accents. Yeah. But um I don't I also don't think that bodes well for Alyssa that like because yeah. No. Alyssa's always complaining. It's really annoying. Yeah, and also she was like cry like I when she was crying to Captain Sandy, I was like, what are you crying about? Yeah, very weird. Yeah, that was like weird behavior a little bit. But um yeah, I can't let the main conflict of the season be between the two of them. Because I They've won't care go. about it ultimately. Um, <laughs> Nothing will come of it. I'll stop actually. caring. <laughs> I actually already have. Um, but I'm excited to see where conflict comes out of. Um, uh, Ross's uh, Ross might become like the main thing Villain. of the season. Oh my god! Villain. Yeah, because he was very. That was very weird. That whole situation. He's yeah. He's creepy a little bit. Yeah, it is turning a little sinister at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's yeah. getting it's getting weird. Um, <laughs> Don't love it. Worst British person on the boat, definitely the season <laughs> by far. Um, by, by far, far guys. and there are a lot, guys. Like there are <laughs> at least three. Um, and yeah, um, well, but those are our predictions, as well as a little bit of Beck and I's thoughts on Below Deck. Yeah, I want to culminate the minutes that we've talked about below deck on this podcast not all of it has made the air because like i have taken some of it out from our longer episodes but since totally understandable we blew through our topics we can really just like (laughs) you know shoot the shit go yeah um but yeah so culture in 2023 i believe it's only going to get more random from here oh my god guys you'll never know what's happening next yeah i believe there are gonna be some it's already a silly little year Mm -hmm. um i don't know if anybody's i don't know if anybody follows being the political nerd i am i was following the speaker of the house election and boy the goof troop is out um i believe it and uh but yeah becca any high level thoughts from you about culture for this year I totally agree with you. I think it's going to be weird. Keep mm. your eye out. Yes. Watch your eyes, though. Someone exactly. might try and get them. And, um, yeah, it's. I'm sure it's just more freak things are going to happen all the time everywhere. Yeah. So mm-hmm. expect everything. But henceforth, you guys know what Beck and I think will happen this year. Yeah. And so we're going to cut to a teeny, tiny little break. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Guys, I'm scared. Oh, we're back. Oh, I'm so scared. Um, so yeah, we're back now, guys. Um, we're kind <laughs> of setting records on our podcast because we've had comment corners for a long time now. Boom, boom, boom. And we're gonna have one next week too, but after that, who knows? Thank God. So just <laughs> remain vigilant, guys. guys. That's something I will always say to you, actually. Um mm-hmm. please. And please. so as we talked about last week, we had a little Apple podcast review from Ectoplasmic. Mm-hmm. And Ectoplasmic kind of 
coming for MPJ superfan status because they've also been commenting a lot on our YouTube. Um, yeah. and I didn't realize they were the same person, but as a central thing of the show, bullying works. And I believe yep. we've bullied people enough where we're getting, you know, our tried and true to really pay attention to us. Yeah. Um, and so Ectoplasm first commented, I have a couple, I have a little bit of a highlight reel that I've compiled mm-hmm. from our YouTube mm-hmm. videos. Um, our episode, Quinn in Berlin, landmark episode of the podcast, really. Um, they commented, yes, love the Scream shirt. Thank you. Which Thank Becca you. was wearing. Um, yeah. And then on our recent episode, Demonic, um, mm-hmm. I, I keep wanting to gender ectoplasm, but I shouldn't do that. Um, ectoplasm <laughs> said, based on your music faves, you need to listen to Sweat Forever by Lily Koningsberg. Like. Like. Yeah, like. I enjoyed that inclusion. <laughs> Um, I haven't listened to that. I'll try to before next week. Yeah. It's it's so hard for me to complete a task in the course of a week, actually. Yeah. I'm um, bad, no. I'm and then, little. perhaps most importantly on our episode, We Lie to Tell the Truth, mm-hmm. Ectoplasm wished me a happy birthday. Yay! And I went on my personal YouTube and <laughs> hit them with a little Comments reply. <laughs> um and so ectoplasm as we put out to caitlin who we haven't heard from since weirdly enough um mm, interesting interesting our commenters especially our girls who are always in the comments we need to hear about you legally actually so like what's yeah, going on i'm so curious i'm so Literally, curious what is your life? where does ectoplasm what do you come care from about? yeah your avatar on youtube is a goat's head on a mantle wearing a crown and so perfect what was the inspiration behind that yeah um, what's the connection there please write in a little thing introducing yourself giving us the who what when where and why mm-hmm. um and so yeah but now we come <laughs> to the time in our show where we get into our jump scares of the week and so a jump scare of the week is just something as becca and i were living our lives as we are completely free to do mm-hmm. as defined by god and the constitution and henceforth um yeah something in that process just really um instilled such a primal kind of um fear uh and uh something we can't really move past until we actually you know process it live on air confront it um and so becca what was that thing for you this week so my jump scare this week is mm-hmm. the fact that um my mother went on a walk with our dogs the other <gasps> day and Miss Honey got off her leash. Oh my god. And le- literally nearly was hit by a car. Miss the car Hun. I know. I know. She's Miss crazy Hun, for that. Warningly. Yeah. And yeah, so thank God this car stopped. And like thank God. She was fine, but I was like, "Mom, no crossing the street when you're alone." <laughs> you're giving her the same girl. rules your grandma's on. <laughs> Literally, if not more restrictive. Mm. But yeah, so we ha- we have to reel them in. But it's just so it's like, oh, she just wants to be a little girl and go run and do girly I things. I know, and she, she doesn't does realize seem it's smart. bad for her. Yeah. I mean, she survived the Philly streets for like a year by herself. Oh, uh, so she is smart. She's streetwise. Yeah. But it like, could have been bad for her. Yeah. Because there are some dogs you like know could get off their leash at literally any time, but they kind of respect yeah. you enough to not. Right. And Misan yeah. kind of gives me those vibes. Yeah. But this time she was just fed up and she was like, oh, I need to She's like, I need my freedom is the thing. <laughs> I need to go run. Yeah, I'm smarter so. than anyone in this house gives me credit for. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But she's okay. But I was a little bit like, Yeah. But we do but stand with her. Exactly. We love her. <laughs> she's good. All right, Quinn. So what scared you this week? Well, it's crazy because both of our jump scares this week have to do with walking dogs. Oh, oh my God. Becca and Quinn being energetically aligned, super cut, new ad. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway. So footage. So I really like when I'm home walking my neighborhood. 
I pathologized it this morning and uh, <laughs> in my journal <laughs> and said okay. that I think it's because things are so slow at home that it gives me a chance to like be in motion because mm. I just like love like I don't particularly love I do like walking other places but like I don't know especially when I'm at home I like need to like walk around a little bit um yeah. so I walk around my neighborhood and one day I just was like I should really just take my dog buddy with me because he never gets picked to do anything because he's a little antisocial and so like Buster Aww. gets to go to work with my mom every day because Buster's just like you know Mr. Congeniality mm-hmm. um and Buddy's a little harder to manage um gotcha. and so I feel bad for Buddy because he never gets picked and so I was like I'm gonna start taking you on my walks with me and so we've been doing that and so then about two or maybe even three days ago at this point Buddy and I are on our walks and I didn't like walk dogs a lot as a kid even though I've always had dogs because mm-hmm. I've always had a yard um right. and so you don't really need to like walk your dogs as much as if like you don't have a yard and so mm-hmm. um I'm not in practice and one of the things that you famously need when you're walking a dog at least in an American mm-hmm. oeuvre is a bag in case your dog you know defecates let's say it yeah yeah. and you have to pick that up I want to be a responsible pet owner um but I wasn't being this day and so but buddy like never poops on walks is the thing too um and so it's usually okay that I forget Mm -hmm. but like a couple days ago it wasn't because buddy Mm -hmm. stops and drops it on just a lawn of one of my neighbors mm-hmm. and I don't have a bag with me and I'm literally on the other side of my neighborhood and so I'm like what the hell we gonna do now <laughs> they're yeah. also like there are cars in the driveway like people are home yes watching. literally it's bad change <laughs> and so I'm walking so I like leave it for a second and I'm like how am I gonna do I needed a second to think and so I'm like I'm walking along and in the road, because it was garbage day, mm-hmm. um, there is a pizza box. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm like, <laughs> hmm. And so then I pick up the pizza box because I'm like, okay, let me pick up some litter. But also I could use this potentially. Yeah. Um, to manage. And so then I like do a little loop and I go back to the place where Buddy pooped. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then I open the pizza box and I'm like, oh, there's a little piece of like tissue paper like in the thing. And so I'm like, oh, this ah, is perfect, actually. Pizza. Yeah. But as I'm starting to like figure it out, literally the house where somebody like, literally the house outside of which Buddy pooped, yeah. somebody's like pulling out their car. And I'm oh. standing at the edge of like at their yard line with a pizza box in one hand and a dog in another. Yeah. Like dressed in all black. And shit in front of you. Okay. Yeah. And I'm and I'm just like, okay. Like this is kind of a jarring thing. And so right. that because I'm me, I like keep walking for a little while. Oh. Because I'm like, Act I'm like, like oh, happening. I can't like do this in front of them. Like I need to act right. like this isn't happening for a second. And so yeah. then I'm like, um, I like, keep walking for a little while and then they eventually leave my neighborhood. And then I do go back and pick up Buddy's droppings and put them in the pizza box. So you return to the scene of the crime, not once, but twice. Actually, yes. Yeah. To cover mm-hmm. up. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Because. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm so glad you found a creative solution. Yes. I the pizza box was my saving grace, actually. Um good thing. And yeah, it is one of those things where I'm like, I'm not sure why I felt well, it was like a weird thing. Like sometimes I feel weird. I feel weird a lot, actually, like awkward. And I'm like, after the event, I'm like, why did I feel weird? But mm. um I also like if you do experience like any amount of social anxiety or anything, mm-hmm. it doesn't give you like clearance to like be like not a good person or do not good things. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally get Because like me being like awkward and being like, oh, I'm like scared of like p- what people will think if I like pick up poop with a 
pizza box like that doesn't like <laughs> that doesn't make it okay for me to leave like leave shit poop, in my neighbor's yeah. yard yeah so that was yeah. a, it's a conversation I had to have with myself like <laughs> yeah because there, you... and that is something I'm realizing it's like okay well and maybe that can be something that helps you relieve your social anxiety like you want to be a good person yeah no and you maybe did the be right paramount thing. of that yeah and so yeah wow. anyway that was my little scare this week but now we turn to one of our favorite moments of the week and mm-hmm. that is we're going to share our manic pixie moments and so this is just a moment where we we're just like you. <laughs> to quote Mary Roach, yeah. um, we're on the right track, baby. You're born <laughs> this way. Um, and so, Becker, what is your Manic Pixie moment this week? So, I've had a lot of Manic Pixie moments before that are all about how I love getting compliments. Uh-huh. Um, and so, I've received a few new ones this week. <sighs> so, some You're ones joking. that I just haven't heard of before or haven't heard in a while at least so i got told that i had flawless skin nice oh, thank yeah. you mm-hmm. i got told that i carry myself well and the way i walk is really nice like the physically the way i walk i was like i wow. agree Concur. and then thank you and then um also i got a compliment on my sternum piece and if i had to say graveyard heart famously yeah exactly are we streaming? some of my favorite compliments are about tattoos because it's uh-huh. like there are certain things like i can't help but like tattoos and clothing like mm-hmm. i picked those yeah it's like, art you I, put on your body yeah i curated that so like you're complimenting my taste as well and i appreciate that so much so yeah i just love getting complimented if you guys want to compliment us in comment corners like please please go for yes, it yes yeah becca you do I have would. some really cool tattoos thank you thank you the so shark much. jaw one in particular i always think about yeah i mean obviously that's a good one for someone to go and copy it on their body yes mm-hmm. yeah so because i'm like how do you like i've never heard you talk about sharks but it just makes a lot of sense oh i love sharks something i didn't know yeah something i kind of intuited but didn't like you know it was never never heard on, I guess. never heard it from the horse's <laughs> mouth um <laughs> from the shark's jaw even yeah even <laughs> um uh, yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> that's good thank you all right well quinn i'm dying to know what had you all happy this week Oh my God. Well, my manicusing moment is actually, so as we all, or as we might, I don't know if I've discussed it particularly on this podcast, but I'm learning Spanish right now. Mm-hmm. And by learning Spanish, I mean, I'm doing Duolingo, which, right. you know, right. people can debate, but <laughs> um, it's just what works for me at this moment. It's okay. Um, it's okay. And so Duolingo. I'm always like, or in the past couple of years, I feel like I've really kind of tuned into how like apps keep our attention. Mm-hmm. Um, social dilemma type beat. Um, and something that has kind of, um, I've really been realizing Duolingo is that because it has all these little things mm-hmm. to like keep you on the app. And it's less sin- it is a little less sinister than like Twitter or like Instagram because like ultimately you are learning like a language. Um Yeah. And I also randomly bought like Super Duolingo, so I never see ads or anything. So it's kind of just like they already have my money, so they don't have to try as hard as on me, but they still like try to keep you on the app because they have like um obviously lives and then they have like friends and so you can do things with your friends. Like I'm like I just started friending people this week, and my I friend know, Annie and I. Social. Yeah, my friend Annie and I are in like a quest together. Um, oh wow! And I guess we both get prizes if we win the quest. But um, anyway, Sweet. another thing Duolingo has is leagues, and so okay. you like compete with other people in your league to see who can gain the most experience in a week. Mm, okay. And, like, there's some weeks I'm just clocking in Duolingo and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Like, I'm just doing the bare ass minimum. I've never gotten mm-hmm. demoted because you can either, like, 
each week you can either stay in your league, get promoted, or get demoted. And so okay. I've never got demoted. Um, nice. I've only got promoted. And last week they track like your top three finishes. So if you finish in the top three, you not mm-hmm. only like get promoted, but you also like get like a special medal. Oh, sweet. Um, and people like if they see your profile, they can see how many times you finish in the top three. Um, so I have like three or four at this point, but um, so I was number one in the Ruby League last week. Yeah, you were. Um, yeah. and so this week I am in the Emerald League, which is above the Ruby League, and so I was just doing my lessons. And the the annoying thing about it is Duolingo will send you thirty seven thousand notifications, being like, "Oh my God, you lost your spot." Or, like, they will send you being like, oh, you fell out of the promotion zone. Oh, you fell in the d- demotion zone. Even if there are six days left to, like, get experience, they'll be like, yeah. make sure you act fast. Um, girl. <laughs> girl. But anyway, it worked on me this week. <laughs> so I randomly, like, so I did my lesson two days ago in, mm-hmm. like, the morning. I usually do them in the morning. And if you do them in the morning, you unlock an EXP boost if you log on after 6 p.m. So again, them trying to get mm. you to come on like twice a day, basically. Yeah. And so um, they go. So I'm like, okay. And so then I have my little EXP boost. And so I was just like, you know what? If they're going to try to demote me, I'm just going to gain as much EXP as possible. And so nice. you like do a lesson on Duolingo. And then after you complete the lesson, you can master that like skill, basically. Or, like, the lesson itself. And so, if you master something, like, the little thing turns gold and you get a lot of experience. And so, I was just, like, mastering everything I could in a 15-minute span. (laughs) And I got, like, two. And then I got another EXP boost. And so, I literally spent, like, an hour on Duolingo, like, after Jeopardy the other night. Oh, my God. I gained like so much experience that I was like literally like everybody else was at like a hundred exp and I was at like seven hundred, um, and so yeah, and so yeah. then I thought I had it locked in. I thought I was gonna be number one overall. Mm-hmm. But then I wake up yesterday, and this user named S has demoted me from Santa. the number one spot. Oh, nor it could nor. be Santa. <laughs> Because Christmas is famously over, so Santa's like, well, now I need to figure out what, what I'm going to do. do. What I'm supposed yeah. to do. Um, what the hell? What the hell? Oh, my God. And no, an S, like, came back and also, like, gained so much EXP yesterday. And yeah. so then S was gaining EXP. And so I was like, okay, I need to gain EXP again. And so I did a bunch of stuff last night, too, but I couldn't even catch up. And so we have a couple more days left. And now I'm like in a competition with the stranger of the internet who I don't even know if is real, really. Oh my gosh. And so, but that's kind of the man of pixie of it all. I'm in like a bring it on esque kind of like tortoise and the hare esque narrative. And like, who knows what even will happen, even. Wow. That's so exciting, though. Yeah. So stay tuned. I I may or may not let you guys know what happened, depending on if I remember. (laughs) Sounds good. (laughs) Wow. Well, I hope you learn language throughout all of this. See, yeah. Um, (laughs) See. See, See. yeah. (laughs) My Spanish did, um, by the time, like, I did it between, like, when I was in Spain and when I went to South America. And by the time I did get to South America, I could use, like, I asked for a table in Spanish okay nice i could like understand certain things and so guys might be a trilingual baddie coming up pretty soon <laughs> trilingual era is on is starting it was um, not on my prediction list but it can be <laughs> Quinn Murphy tri- <laughs> why isn't quinn murphy trilingual era on a lot more of y'all's 2023 <laughs> bingo boards yeah think about exactly. it exactly <gasps> think about it oh my god that's a good idea for next year we do pop culture predictions but make like an actual bingo board a bingo board yeah and if it happens, That's we cute. can update it. Well, I can make one for the Instagram with all these predictions. Maybe. All right. We'll think Is about 10, it. 14 enough for a bingo board? Probably. Uh, but we, we You could famously make a bingo board however you wanted it, really. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Oh, my goodness. But another landmark episode, really. 
yeah to start off the 2023 year we've done um, it again yeah and so becca where yeah. can people keep up with you if they are so inclined where can they find pictures of your tattoos to compliment Oh, thank you. Well, they can follow me on Instagram at Becca Hobart, Twitter mm-hmm. and Spotify, Bex Gloss, TikTok, where y'all going during World War Three. They can also find me petting the belly of the biggest dog you've ever met. <gasps> yeah. And then Quinn, where can the people keep up with you individually? You can find me at Quinn P. Murphy on Instagram and TikTok and at mm-hmm. Quinn P. Murphy underscore on twitter and you can also find me being obsessed with the biggest dog you've ever met named parker Mm -hmm. um because he is black and curly and i love both those things in a dog and also big even though big i do find a little scary oh my god he's sleeping so peacefully i know he's a kitty pie (laughs) <laughs> i'm gonna sing that about him um exactly. so he is a christ-like figure i think like yeah. that's a new thing i'm on the precipice of saying like s- describing things as christ-like figures <laughs> um and so He's parker will be the first one i like publicly decide Thank um you. And so, Becca, where can people keep up with the show if they're also so inclined? Well, they can follow at Manic Pixie Jump Scare on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, where we post the podcast at length, a visual version. Mm-hmm. And then please, please, please email in, of course, at manicpixiejumpscare at gmail.com. We have so many backstories we want to learn about from you guys yes. that we are just lacking knowledge of right now. We need lore. So, yes, we need to build the mpgc oh, fuck i would say it wrong mpjcu why is that mm. so hard to say but we have to and uh as our loyal fans you can flesh that out for us mm-hmm. yeah yeah we're we're Quinn. Quinn. And, and we're a backup and and thank, thank you thank you for, for- Listening? Oh, I don't know. But until us, nobody knows this. The colors go. Manic Pixie Jump Scare is hosted by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Executive produced by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Sound and video editing by Quinn Murphy. Social media management and highlights by Becca Hobart. And our theme song was written by Quinn Murphy, Becca Hobart, and Nandita Mahesh.